special emotions for a family physician association because I am myself is a son of family physician association. My father was a very senior uh, family doctor. So today I will be talking about the vitamin B12 deficiency in India and its clinical relevance and, and management. And uh, we are uh, in the nutritional deficiency week uh, of the nation. So this is a very apt topic. So let me introduce uh, my city first. It is uh, Bhavnagar, which is on the coastal part of the Gujarat. The great Maharaja Krishna Kumar Siji was the first king who gave this state to the Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel. So we were the first to join the union of the India. The famous Alang ship breaking yard is near Bhavnagar and the famous uh, Palitana Jain temples are also near Bhavnagar. So we are uh, in a small city. Now let's come to the main topic, the vitamin B12. The vitamin B12, now if you say that your cell mitochondria is a uh, atomic reactor, then your vitamin B12 is a uranium. So just like without uranium, the reactor cannot work, same way without B12, the mitochondria will not work. So it, you can say it's a fuel for your cell. So vitamin B12, also called cobalamin, is a water soluble. This is a very important thing. We will come to it in a investigation part, why it's important. This is a water soluble vitamin with a key role in the normal functioning of the brain, nervous system, blood. There are eight types of B vitamins and out of these, the B12 is very important for the brain, nervous system and blood. Now, vitamin B12 has a highest molecular weight. If Anyone ask you what is the full form of vitamin? The full form of vitamin is vital miniature nutrients. During the evolution, we have lost the property to manufacture it. So you have to get it from outside. You have to eat it. You have to drink it. You cannot selfly made it. So it has the highest molecular weight out of all the vitamins, most complex structure. We are all fortunate that we passed our MBBS exam in 70s and 80s and 90s. So we are not. Uh, uh, we don't have to remember all these uh, complex structures. This is the only vitamin with the metal. No other vitamin contains metal inside. Iron is a metal, but it is not a vitamin. It is a micronutrient. This is only vitamin with a metal, that is cobalt. Therefore, we call it cobalamin. As I told you, it is a fuel for mitochondria. The mitochondria cannot work without vitamin B12. It is very important for DNA and fatty acid synthesis. Without this, the DNA will not be made properly, will not function properly. It is a cofactor for two important enzymes, the methionine synthetase and L-methylmanolyl coenzyme mutase. Just remember the names, it's not much important at clinical level. So vitamin B12 is produced only by bacteria and algae. In this COVID era, we always see that this I am, organisms are very harmful, but remember the microflora in your intestine are a helpful bacteria. They produce the B12. No animal can produce it. No animal can produce it and no vegetable food has it. As by and by show you a slide that so many of the vegetarian food contains the iron, but this is not in case of a B12. No vegetable food contains I, uh, the B12. There were some WhatsApp forwards in the WhatsApp university that if you eat the Amki Gutli, you will get B12. If you do some deepening of your lady fingers inside the water and drink the water, you get the B12. There are blah, blah, blah. If you eat some cold food on the satam of Gujarati ritual, you will get B12. All these are rubbish. You don't get any B12 from any vegetarian food whatsoever. Now let's see some history. The there was an accidental discovery of the people who treated a pernicious anemia patients with liver juice. That was way back. In 1934, the Edwin Cohen, was, what, what he did, he treated the pernicious anemia with high concentration of the liver juice. And he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1934. In 1949, the lady discovered, the Mary Show discovered something called B12. And what she got? Just a grant of $400. So a time is very important. If you discover it something early, even if it is not much useful, you will get the Nobel and the lady will only get the $400. So now let's just see the different forms of the B12. The hydroxycobalamin is the most natural form of the B12. Cyanocobalamin is a synthetic B12. Cyanocobalamin is not produced by nature. Cyanocobalamin we produce in the labs, we produce in the pharma companies. 
methicobalamin is the most active form of the B12. Adenosine cobalamin in, is the form in which the B12 is stored. So in short, when you give cyanocobalamin to the patient, it gets converted into hydroxycobalamin. It gets converted into methicobalamin. The methicobalamin works. And when it is in excess, it is stored in form of the adenosylcobalamin. Plus, if you have given cyanocobalamin, there will be release of cyanide. This is very important in few patients. I will talk to you, uh, talk about it later. Now, what is the recommended daily intake of uh, B12? The US and UK, they never agrees. The US say you take two to three micrograms per day. UK wale white people, they say 1.5 microgram per day. Pregnancy, the requirement is more 2.6 microgram per day. Lactation is 2.8. All the old non-vegetarian people and all the vegetarian people in the world should get B12 fortified food or B12 supplementation. All the patients of diabetes are on metformin. They should take the B12 supplementation. There is nothing which can give you 100% B12 from the food. I will talk to it later why the Indians are facing the problem. The storage, whenever the excess B12 is there, it is stored inside the liver. The two to five milligram out of which 50% is inside the liver, 50% in the rest of the body. Out of this two to five milligram, 0.1% is lost in the intestine. But there is a beautiful mechanism by which it again enters inside the liver by enterohepatic circulation. So whatever is lost is again reabsorbed and it is reaches the liver and it gets stored. Even with total cutoff of supply, now read this sentence very carefully. Even with total cutoff of supply of B12, suppose you are thrown in Antarctica, suppose you are living in quarantine because of the corona, there are no groceries around, there is no milk around, and you stay six months in a home, so your liver should be supplying B12 for five years. So theoretically, there should not be any B12 deficiency because you have got a storage for five years. Then why the hell these Indians we Indians are getting B12 deficiency so rampant. I will come to the cause, but first let us understand the physiology of the B12 absorption. The B12 is always bound with the protein. There is no raw B12 in the food. I'm, I will first talk about what is happening in, of, in the B12 in the food. This B12 is, found, is bound to the protein. When you chew, the saliva digests this protein to some level. And the R binder of the saliva binds with the B12. This R binder comes at two places. Remember, one R binder is from saliva, another R binder is from stomach. But first remember, the R binder from saliva attached to the B12. This R binder plus B12 complex enters inside the stomach. The hydrochloric acid, this cleaves the R binder and B12 is released. Now this B12 with combined with the R binder of the stomach, the intrinsic factor is produced by the parietal cells of the stomach, but remember, this doesn't attach to the B12 inside the stomach. So this is like a relay match of Olympic. Something is produced here, attaches here. Something is produced here, attaches in the intestine. So intrinsic factor is produced in the stomach. The intrinsic factor and R binder plus B12 enters inside the intestine. The pancreatic protease comes here. This pancreatic protease digests this R binder. So again, the B12 becomes free. This free B12 now attaches to the intrinsic factor and the B12 intrinsic factor complex enters inside the enterocytes. It is absorbed. This is called active absorption. This is something called passive. I will talk a bit about later. This is called active absorption. Without intrinsic factor, the B12 from food will not be absorbed. And the condition in which the intrinsic factor is absent, we call it pernicious anemia. When there are antibodies directed against the parietal cells, so no intrinsic factor is produced, we call it pernicious anemia. So this complex enters inside, and now what happens? It is picked up by transcobalamin. This is called transcobalamin 2. This transcobalamin 2 takes it to the blood and to the tissues. Then there is a transcobalamin 3 in the liver. This B12 joins with the transcobalamin 3 and it is stored. So saliva, stomach, intestine, intrinsic factor, enterocytes, blood and liver. This is total B12 absorption cycle.
So as I told you, there are two forms of the absorption. The active, which I told you, is the active absorption, and there is something called passive absorption. Now this is according to the chemistry principle that anything in excess will be passively diffused. Suppose the concentration of B12 is too high in the intestine, then it will diffuse to the blood without any help of intrinsic factor, protease or R binder. And therefore, you look at the requirement of B12 in previous slides, it is only two to three microgram per day. Now remember, what is the strength of your tablet? 1500 microgram. Why? Because when you are giving 1500 microgram tablet, the B12 will, trap, will passively diffuse inside the blood. You will not need any intrinsic factor. You will not need any help of any factors. It is called the passive diffusion of B12. Please unmute, please mute the microphone. I'm getting the echo. Now let us see the epidemiology. The 20% of the population is B12 deficient. In India, it is around 60%. Some of the studies in India has shown that 60% of Indians are B12 deficient. All the elderly, hospitalized and malnourished patients, the B12 deficiency is around 30 to 40%. So what are the problems? I will thus address the problems very shortly because of the paucity of the time. The problem is with the food and water. The problem is with the saliva. The problem is in the stomach. The problem is in the intestine, pancreas, transport and storage. These are the problems because of which the Indians are having more B12 deficiency than the Western population. The food, we are very choosy. Even at the time of choosing a bride for our son or a groom for our daughter, in the matrimonial website, we say we are vegetarian. We are agitarian. That means we are veg plus egg or we are lacto-vegetarian. That means we, don't, we are so strict that we don't even drink milk. The Jain population, they think that milk is also non-vegetarian. So all the people who are in this green zone ought to have B12 deficiency because they are eating everything which doesn't have a B12. Just look at this slide. So we are vegetarians, we eat vegetables, but what about humanitarians? The humanitarians don't eat human, but still they are human, they are called humanitarians. Look at this chart. These are the rich source of B12. Look at this, excellent, excellent, very good, very good. But all these are non-veg foods. The beef and salmon and something, something which the names we have not heard because a uh, person like me have never entered into a non-veg restaurant. Now our uh, cup of tea starts from here. Yogurt, it is good. That is uh, curd or yogurt. The cow's milk, grass fed, this is very important. So, abhi agar aapki gai ghas khati hai, tabhi uska dood mein B12 milega. So, ye jara patanjali wali baat ho But cow's milk, curd, this is very good source of B12. So, eggs, they have considered eggs into vegetarian. We are not considering. So, our source of B12 is milk, buttermilk, curd, and nothing else. Paneer will give some, uh, cheese will give some B12, but nothing is going to give B12. Ab bhaji khao, muli khao, kakadi khao, tomato khao, kuch bhi khao. This is not going to give you B12. It will give you plenty of iron as Bhavin Bhai told you. But forget it, it will not give you B12. So milk and good milk products will only give B12 to you. Now there is a misconception that installing an RO plant inside your home will reduce your B12 supply. Because water is one of the important source of B12. I will go to it later. But first, I want to make it clear that lactose, which has a molecular weight of 340 gram per mole, or salt, which has a molecular weight of 50 gram per mole, is also not filtered. It is retained. Why the molecular weight of B12 is quite high than these two. It is 1355 gram per mole. So if the lactose is not filtered, it is retained. A salt is not filtered, it is retained then there are no chances that B12 will be filtered and thrown away in RO plant. It is not going into your wash basin. It will be retained in your RO plant. So please, there are so many misconceptions in people's mind, in doctor's mind, that RO plants are responsible for B12 deficiency. No, RO plants are not responsible for B12 deficiency. Now another question, why villagers are not having B12 deficiency? Why city people are having B12 deficiency? The next slide will explain you. The B12 level is very good in well and step well water. Our ancestors, they were drinking water from well, step well. Our kings, 
Bhavnagar Maharaja has made so many step wells inside four of the Bhavnagar uh, uh, zone. Good B12 level in ponds and lakes. B12 will be high in stagnant water because in stagnant water there will be algae. In uh, moving water there will be no algae and the algae produces the B12. So it is good in stagnant water like wells, step wells, pond, lakes. But it will be very, very less in flowing waters like river. river. And it will be almost zero in filtered water. Whatever filtration we are doing in our urban population, you are losing your B12 sources. So whenever you are living in Ahmedabad, even you are in Mumbai, in Hyderabad, Calcutta, forget, you are not going to get any B12 from the water. You have to take some sublingual tablets very fancily. So water source is very important, but too much of hygienicity is taking us away. Now saliva, the problem with the saliva. As I told you, the R binder is secreted from the saliva and it attaches to the B12 inside the stomach. Now this R binder decreases with age. As the age advances, all will experience, there is dry mouth, there is less secretion of the saliva. With this, there is also less production of the R binder. And our people are fond of chewing gutka, tamaku, kheni, etc., etc. And when a person chews tobacco, chews gutka, there will be destruction of the R binder. So at the mouth, the problem starts. Now we enter the stomach. We are fond of PPIs. We eat too much spicy food. The MDH masala, the marchi, dhania, and haldi. The MDH are the main source of ingredients of our food. So you get too much of gastritis. And what you take? You can take all the zoles, the pentaprazoles, the omeprazoles, the ribiprazoles. The sale of PPI in India is highest in the world. So when you suppress the acid, your meat will not be absorbed. So you are getting a silent stomach at the cost of B12 deficiency. Pernicious anemia, as I explained, no intrinsic factor, the B12 will not be absorbed. The patient will have anemia, that is called pernicious anemia. Metabolic surgeries, the new trend. Everyone wants to have a slim body. No one wants XL size or double XL size. So they, gave, they go for gastric metabolic surgeries, gastric bypass, row and y loop. All these procedures, will hamper with the absorption of the B12 and the person will have a B12 deficiency and less HCL in geriatric population. As the age advances, the secretion of acid reduces because this is one prestation. Now you should not have a taste of mouth. Now you should not eat a good tasty food. So there is no need of hydrochloric acid. So it will get also reduced with the advanced age. Now we come to the intestine, the problems in the intestine, poor absorption. If the villa is not proper, if the villa is degenerated because of some malabsorption syndrome, tropical sprue, the B12 will not be absorbed properly. The poor antrohepatic circulation, there is some obstruction in the common bile duct. Blind loop syndrome, blind loop syndrome means there is so much bacterial overgrowth inside the intestine. That's the, the whole of the intestine is inflamed. So there is no space of where the B12 can get absorbed. So this is what we call the traffic jam of organism. So many times the patient tells us that I have got a decades of stool inside my intestine. Now that is a false term, but sometimes the total colon is laded with organism and this can cause B12 deficiency. Now, if we just recall the absorption process, now the B12 and intrinsic factor has entered inside the intestine. The protease has to cleave the R binder. The R binder B12 complex has to be cleaved by protease. And this protease is produced by pancreas. So whenever the patient is having chronic pancreatitis, his pancreas is not producing protease. So this patient will end up into B12 deficiency. And transport, I don't go into detail because these are rare conditions. Transcobalamin deficiency is rare, but still it is one of the cause of B12 deficiency. Storage, as I told you, what is the problem in the Indian? The Indians are thought to be transcobalamin 3 deficient. We are not having proper transcopolamine 3 in the liver. So what we talked about in previous slide, that even you cut off your B12 supply, the patient will remain B12 sufficient for five years. That is not seen in Indians because our Indian liver cannot store B12 properly. Therefore, we are getting B12 deficiency more than the Western population. So we need a long-term or a lifetime replacement in every 
person, not every patient, in every person. Now, consequences of the deficiency. I will just cover it in few seconds. Megaloblastic anemia. Sir talked about iron deficiency anemia. It is hypochromic microcytic. But whenever the B12 is low, the MCV will be high. The cells will be larger. This is called mean corpuscular volume. Isolated macrocytosis. If your MC is 100, 110, 98, 96, this is B12 deficiency. Therefore, always look at the CBC. Don't just order B12. I will come to it later. How misuse, how misuse we are doing of B12 level estimation. Neutrophil hypersegmentation. If your pathologist friend tells you that the uh, cells are hypersegmented, then this is a B12 deficiency. Isolated thrombocytopenia. A patient comes to you with a platelet count of 80,000, 90,000, no symptoms. Think of the dengue later. Think of the B12 deficiency first. And pancytopenia. So many times, because of the B12 deficiency, the patient will have anemia, the RBC count will be low, WC count will be low, and platelets will be low. We, what we call the pancytopenia. In CNS, the patient will have motor and autonomic neuropathies. Subacute combined degeneration, I don't go into detail, but a loss of touch sensation and retention of temperature sensation. Seizures, the patient can present to you with seizures, memory problems. So many times, a patient comes to you, sir, sab mein bhool jata Pahle dementia ke baare mein mat socho. First, think about a common disorder, that this patient can have a memory problem because of the B12 deficiency. Disorientation, dementia, and mood changes. This can be due to COVID. This can be because of the quarantine phases, but B12 also can cause it. Unsteady gait, giddiness, and postural hypotension. One of the patients landed up in my clinic. His only complaint was that because we are in Gujarat, we have a prohibition of the alcohol. He was caught by every day, every week by a policeman that you are drunk. He was not a drunk. He was having unsteady gait because of the B12 deficiency. So remember, he can swing like this and that without drinking. So if you are fond of drinking, this is a good thing that you develop B12 deficit, you feel like you are drunk. And tendency to fall and increase fractures. This is very important in old age. Vitamin B12 and vitamin D, these are the two vitamins which deficiency can cause tendency to fall and increase incidence of fractures. In GIT, it can cause glossitis and stomatitis. The patient can move in the mouth. These are the common presentations of B12 deficiency. Jaundice of ineffective erythropoiesis. If you see the sclera, there is a lemon yellow, just light yellow sting. Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, this all can happen because of the B12 deficiency. Weight loss is a very, very important thing. A patient comes to you with weight loss, first think of uh, diabetes, B12 deficiency, and thyrotoxicosis. Rule out these three, but B12 is one of the common cause of weight loss in patients. Vascular, hyperhomocysteinemia. So if the patient is having B12 deficiency, the patient can land up into deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, CV stroke, and MI. In young patient, if a 25-year-old coming to you with CV stroke, 30-year-old coming to you with myocardial infarction, or a 35 coming to you with DVT, think that this patient might be having a B12 deficiency, which raises the level of homocysteine and homocysteine makes atherosclerosis fast and arteries stiff. So B12 deficiency is one of the common cause of accelerated atherosclerosis in young patients. Bones, it increases the osteoporosis because homocysteine binds with the collagen matrix and it reduces the bone strength. B12 deficiency will cause tachycardia and can cause cardiac failure in CVS. It can cause osteoporosis in bones. It can cause lemon yellow waxy paler. This is the only good term which we can use in Hindi. If you have no love failure, you don't have any So if the patient is having totally noor bagar ka chehra, then the patient might be having a B12 deficiency. Premature whitening of hair. A 25-year-old fellow coming to you with white hair, 28-year coming to you with white hair, B12 deficiency is one of the common cause mild dicterus, and flabby, bulky frame. The patient has lost weight, but he is something looking like, just he is looking like that. So a glossitis, mouth ulcers, a hypersegmented neutrophils, a macrocytes, this is a big uh, RBC, 
and pain and pricking type of sensation. This is hyperparesthesia in the legs or numbness in the legs. Now, this is the difference. You see, she is laughing, but she is not laughing because she is in joy. She is laughing because she is in delusion of the B12 efficiency. So, this is the waxy paler, the hairs are a little bit of on the whiter side. And when you supplement, she becomes normal. So this is the difference which you can get uh, by treating the patients of B12 deficiency. Now investigation. We are living in this Google and Wikipedia area. Someone entering inside the chamber of uh, Dr. Dinesh Bhai Gohil or Dr. Dixit sir, he will always come with a report. So this is my report, I am B12 deficient. Now there are some problems. The investigation P12 level, lowest acceptable is 200 to 550 picogram per ml. But it is reliable or is there any variation? In my first slide, I told you P12 is water soluble vitamin. So a patient who has not taken any water or liquid since last six hours, his B12 will be around 300 or 350. But if, if he drinks one liter of bottle, his B12 will be 120. This doesn't mean that this patient is B12 deficient. So any patient coming to you with a low level of B12, the patient is not B12 deficient. So what to do? Look at the MCV. If his MC is, MCV is around 92, 95, look at the symptoms. The patient is having fatigue, weakness, patient can give his parasthesia. And remember, anemia and neurological manifestation never coexist. Why we don't know? Because the God never reads Davidson's textbook of medicine. God never reads Harrison's textbook of medicine. His logic is different. So anemia and neurological problems never coexist. If the patient is having anemia, neurology will be not there. If neurological, anemia will not be there. So a low B12 level with symptoms or a low B12 level backed with high homocysteine or methyl malonic acid level, MMA level. These are all costly things. So don't just, I just want to emphasize that only ordering B12 is not going to serve any purpose. So what is the definition of B12 deficiency? A B12 level is low plus symptoms or a B12 level is low plus MMA or homocysteine is elevated or holo transcobalamin level. This is very costly test, only done in five to six labs, is active B12. If that holo transcobalamin is low, then you can stamp the patient as B12 deficiency. Or if the patient is having parietal cell or intrinsic factor antibody. Now clinical definition of B12 is cobalamin less than 150 with clinical features of B12 deficiency or cobalamin less than 150 on two separate occasions that you have done B12 level is low. After 15 days without supplementation, you again repeat it is low, then this patient is having B12 deficiency. Or cobalamin is less than 150, homocysteine more than 30 or MMA more than 0.4 or holo transcobalamin is low. These are the definition. So any one report of low B12 is not B12 deficiency. Ceiling test, I don't go into detail because it is now obsolete, but this was done in past and this was our full question in medicine exam. So see how rapid the medicine science has evolved. The full question of 1996 MD exam has now become obsolete. So B12 supplementation. Now let me come to the main point. All the general practitioners, all the family physicians, they are fond of filling the syringe with the red injection and giving inside the button. It gives the job satisfaction that I have done something beautiful. But just remember, the oral supplementation is as good as IM or IV supplementation if it is taken properly and given properly. So what are the things we have for B12 supplementation? Oral tablets are there. The parenteral injections are there. That is cyanocobalamin, hydroxy, and methicobalamin. In Western population, they are using transdermal patches. India may possible in India because person like me perspiring like this much, just imagine how a common laborer will be perspiring. So there is no use of transdermal patch. And nasal sprays. Now the fancy nasal sprays have come, which you can put inside your nose and that will take care of your B12 deficiency. Now how much and how long? As I told you, when you are giving 3000 microgram tablets or 1500 microgram tablets, the B12 will be absorbed as passive diffuser. Now remember, this is a mouth dissolving tablet. You are keeping it sublingual. The absorption is not below the tongue. The sorbit rate or isosorbit dinitrate you are giving below the tongue, the absorption happens there. Here the absorption 10% is below the tongue. 
90 percent is through the whole gastrointestinal tract. So this is a mouth dissolving tablet. Ideally, it should be given 30 to 40 minutes before any food and the patient should not take anything by mouth for at least 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Then these tablets will give you excellent results like injection. So you start with 3000 micrograms, that is two tablets of 1500 straight and you keep it continuous for one month followed by 1500 micrograms for three months and followed by 1500 microgram twice a day. But no water for 30 minutes because that will hamper. What will I, I told you, this is going to happen against the concentration gradient. So whenever you are taking with the water, you are making the 1500 microgram tablets 10 or 20 milligram microgram because the B12 will be diluted. So don't dilute, don't take the water, just put it under your tongue and wait. I am 1000 microgram daily alternate day for 20 days followed by once weekly for four weeks followed by once a month. So if you are fond of injection, if your patient wants that I want to take injection, you can always give. But remember this, this Sonam Kapoor in Prem Ratandan Payo is lying on this coach just not because of this poster photography. She was perhaps given a intramuscular B12 by some family practitioner like our uh, esteemed uh, chairperson sitting here or this Salman Khan sitting here with one buttock above. This type of patients can be seen in waiting room that they are so uncomfortable because you have given B12. So IM is painful. If you give IV, always remember this can produce severe thrombohepatitis. So it is always important to dilute in 100 or 250 ml of saline. IV B12 can produce fatal hypokalemia. So this is not an innocent injection that you start the trip and tell the patient that you go home. It can precipitate gout and this I want to emphasize. If you are using cyanocobalamin, that is Witcofol or other injections, this cyanocobalamin, if it is given to a patient who is heavy smoker or who is heavy tobacco chewer, this cyanocobalamin can cause optic atrophy, which is irreversible. So a B12 injection can cause optic atrophy if cyanocobalamin is given to tobacco chewer or heavy smoker because we saw that cyanocobalamin produce a little bit of cyanide and this cyanide is toxic to the optic nerve. So don't use cyanocobalamin in tobacco chewers and smokers. This is called tobacco embolopia. So when to use? You use it in B12 deficiency, cyanide consuming, transcobalamin deficiency, and it is also used in allergic individuals to suppress the IgA producing cells. Brands, as I told you, cyanocobalamin, Witcofol, these are cheaper brands. Look at the cost, 42 rupees of a vial, which will, uh, which you can use for months, at least for two months, three months. Eldavit, eight rupees, Witcofol C, eight rupees, hydroxycobalamin, tri uh, Very sadly, it is in short supply because this is a very good molecule. You can treat B12 deficiency in just 12 rupees injection. Methicobalamin are always costly. The Mycobal, Neurokind, et cetera, cost is around 22 to 100 rupees, depending on the brand. Which molecule, why, you can use anything. But when the patient is having some neurological problem like paraplegia, subacute combined degeneration, don't give this sign or hydroxy because it will need conversion. You directly use the active, that is methicobalamin. Otherwise in anemia or in other condition, whether you use cyano, whether you use hydroxy, whether you use methy, it doesn't make any difference. But oral formulation only available is methicobalamin. There is no oral formulation of cyanocobalamin hydroxy available in our country. In Western countries, cyano is available. But here, only methicobalamin is available. And as I told you, the dose is 3000 microgram to start with, then 1500, and then you give 1500 twice a week. So subclinical B12 deficiency, asymptomatic individual with rap reports of B12 is low or high homocysteine level. There is no guideline whether to treat or not. But if the homocysteine is high in a regular checkup and the patient is young, then it is always to supplement with methicobalamin 15 to 500 microgram. So we all are very proud to be vegetarian. We say in Western countries, when we go to some restaurant, that we are vegetarians, we don't eat anything non-veg. And when we are feeling proud, we have to pay the price and that price is B12 deficiency. I thank you for your patience hearing. And if there is any question, uh, uh, I, I will thank you.